to another episode of Hello Adrian, the podcast. Be sure that you like and subscribe, share with a friend, tell somebody else about the podcast. Don't just keep all this awesomeness to yourself. <laughs> I hope you guys ha um, had a really great week last week. I hope you had a really, a really great weekend. Y'all know I don't edit. I take out the beginning when I'm coming in here and I take out the end when I'm getting up to stop my camera. Okay? Okay. So, listen, my MacBook just did something real dumb, but you know what? It was user error. It really was. I plug, when I record these, I record on an external hard drive because I don't do the editing on my uh, MacBook. I do the editing on my iMac because it's bigger. Duh. And it went, I'm like, it wasn't recording. I always do like a test to make sure that the sound is okay. And if you listen, the fountain is off. <laughs> so I have this fountain. I have this whole little Zen area and I absolutely love my fountain, but I didn't realize how distracting it was until I think someone said something about it. And then it was like, oh, you know what? That really is distracting for this. So I made sure to turn it off. I had to make sure it wasn't overflowing because it's like a, there's a pump on it and then it kind of settles, but yeah, it's cool. But this week I had such a great question. So um, the question was, how important do you think the love languages are when you start to date again? Listen, y'all, look, and I got my little sheet here. Um, and we all know that um, the five love languages was written by Dr. Gary Chapman. I think this is, it's, you just can't do without it. I mean, I am so serious. It is, in my opinion, it is so, and in according to like all of this, it's so important to know the love language of the person that you are with. Now, I will say that this is not like a first date type question. Always fun to send a text message or, you know, to send like a little link where you can take the love languages test. And so you can kind of learn, if you don't know, do one for yourself first. If you're single, do it as a single. And then if you, cause it's different. And then if you are coupled up, you build up, then y'all do it together as a couple because it really, really makes a difference. Um, I'm gonna quickly go over um, what the five love languages are and then I'm gonna come back with some stuff. So the first uh, love language is words of affirmation, acts of service, quality time, giving gifts, and physical touch. Listen, if, I'm, and I'm not gonna say what my love language is, but let's just say my love language is giving gifts. If you never ever give me a gift, then I'm going to feel like you don't love me, okay? I mean, it is what it is. Um, but like, let's say giving gifts, it says, uh, what is it? Tangible symbols that reflect your thoughtfulness and effort. How to express it. Make birthdays and anniversaries special surprise. Make birthdays and anniversaries special. Surprise them with their favorite treat. After conflict, give a small token of your love and an apology note. That's just, to me, oh my gosh, y'all. Love languages save relationships, I promise. Because if you love a person the way that they receive love, then they always feel love. But if my if my love language is not gifts of service and you always buy me gifts, then I'm going to feel like you don't love me because that's not how I receive love. And it's also extremely important to love the person that you are with in their love language, not in yours. If my love language is gifts, uh, like uh, gift giving, and yours is not, but I always love you in my love language, you don't receive that. Does it make sense? And y'all know I always have to say I'm not an expert, but this is these are things that I have learned, like learn, learn. And because I know what my love language is, it's so easy for me to convey that. You know, so uh, let's go. Words of affirmation. Uh, what is it? Verbal compliments that express your love and expression. Appreciation. How to express it. Brag to others about your sp spouse. Write love letters. Okay, y'all write love letters in these streets. Love letters, aka text messages, aka emails, you know, all that stuff. After conflict, speak words that build security and initiate a sincere apology. Oh child, y'all just don't understand. Like it's it's 
so important. Acts of service. What is it? Any act that eases the burden of responsibility. Bruh, you gonna do the laundry? Oh, thank you, boo. Um, how to express it. Wash the dishes, pamper your spouse, offer, let me do that for you. After conflict, make behavior changes requested through conflict. So you fussing and fighting because you don't ever clean up and blah, blah, blah. And you know that's how I feel, loved. And you don't, we, we fuss and argue about it and then you still don't change. That's a problem. That is a problem. But I also say that the sincerest apology is changed behavior. Anything else? I mean, you know, that's just me. Quality time. What is it? Focus and undivided attention spent together. How to express. Turn off electronics, go for a walk, plan date night, start a hobby together. After conflict, make eye contact, active listening with empathy, don't interrupt. Listen, let me tell y'all, I used to think that, you know, as long as we are in the same room together, even doing different things, that, you know, that was okay. And sometimes it is, depending on the people. But, you know, sometimes it's good to put the phones down. I try when I'm out um, or with somebody, I try my best not to be on my phone. And of course I have kids, so they're older, but you know, they're still my children. So I literally like put my phone on do not disturb and I'll only answer it if one of the kids are calling. And most times they know if I'm out somewhere or, or if I'm doing something. So they typically won't call. So if my phone rings while I'm out, I know I need to answer. But again, my children are older. But yeah, I, I tend not to be on the phone. Uh, I may like take a couple of pictures or something. But other than that, it's, you know, it's up. I'm not like actively scrolling or texting with other people. Um, like one of my girlfriends was on a date. Um very recently and she had been gone for so long so it's like i'm sending her like the little eye emoji like hey check in what's up and she called me and i i couldn't answer and then she texted me she was like hey still on the date i will call you later so i'm like okay cool but you know those kind of things you know just kind of check in but um i didn't know how long she was going to be out but that's just me checking on my friend because i knew that she was out we went over gift giving um, a physical touch. What is it? A non-sexual touch that reinforces your presence. How to express long hugs, gentle caressing, kissing, massages, hand holding. After conflict, hold each other without saying a word. Cuddle together in the bed. Do I need to say more? You know what? The, what's powerful? The forehead kiss. What movie was that? Um, Best Man? I believe it was the best man. Listen, that poor egg is. Mm, mm, mm. But I love how it said um, a non-sexual touch. It, you need to be able to touch the person that you're with and sex not follow all the time. I mean, that's, that's me. Tell me, do y'all agree? What do you guys think about the love languages? Do you think that it's necessary? I do. I do. I think it so much can be solved if you know your person's love language. I think it's so important. I think this needs to be taught, you know, not only just for, not just for marriage, but in relationships in general, even with your children. Children have different love languages. They, you, you can't, I'm like, you, you love them all, but you have to love them all in the way that they receive love make sense all right guys i hope that you guys enjoyed this really quick episode today on love languages and if i feel like they are important and i do i think you should all take a course take this little quiz it, it doesn't take very long at all maybe five minutes maybe five minutes if that but it's such a good tool it's such a great resource it's great to know to be able to apply to all the relationships in your life even your friendships so yeah, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed today. I said that already, but I'm going to say it again. I'm not going to edit this out. So you guys have a great week on purpose and I will see you next week. Bye guys.